Interior and Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. Always good to be on with you. All right, so the president knew Michael Flynn misled the FBI and then implored, uh, implored then FBI Director James Comey to drop his investigation of Flynn. In your view, Senator, does this amount to obstruction of justice? Uh, well, Wolf, that's a legal conclusion for others to reach, but it certainly strongly suggests uh, that the president uh, was aware that in reaching out to Jim Comey, the former FBI director, and urging him to go easy on Flynn, uh, that he was engaging in an inappropriate intervention in an ongoing investigation. Um, there are recent reports uh, that over the summer, the president also reached out to a number of senior Republican senators, chair of the Intelligence Committee, majority leader, and others to urge them to wrap up this investigation quickly. It suggests an ongoing, deeply troubling pattern of personal intervention in an ongoing investigation by the president. And the suggestion today, Wolf, by the president's lawyers uh, that he can't be charged with obstruction of justice, that he can't commit obstruction of justice because he oversees uh, the Department of Justice and the federal law enforcement infrastructure, I think is a laughable proposition. It would mean that the president would be above the law. And one of our core foundational constitutional principles in this country is that no one is above the law. You're referring to what the president's uh, private uh, personal attorney, John Dowd, said uh, that the president can't obstruct justice because, in, in John Dowd's words, he is the chief law enforcement officer under the Constitution and has every right to express his view of any case. Uh, you don't buy that defense. I don't buy that one bit, Wolf. Um, I think it's Nixonian to argue that somehow uh, the president has carte blanche to do whatever he wants with regards to law enforcement and ongoing investigations, in particular an investigation into his conduct. Um, that would create a presidency that is completely above the law and unaccountable. Um, I do think there is a debatable proposition about whether impeachment is the only means of removal of a president, but I don't think it's debatable whether the president has impunity to interfere with whatever investigations he chooses. Does the president have the, the, the power to, to pardon himself? That's also something that's never been tested before. Uh, but I think going back to the Federalist Papers, to the very founding of our country, um, there has often been asserted the principle that you cannot be both judge and jury in a case. And if the president were to pardon himself, he would literally be acting as both judge and jury in a case against himself. The president appeared to admit he knew about Flynn's uh, misleading the FBI. Uh, he tweeted this, and I'll put it up on the screen. I had to fire General Flynn because he lied to the vice president and the FBI. He has pled guilty to those lies. It is a shame because his actions during the transition were lawful. This, uh, there, there was nothing to hide. As you know, the White House later said the tweet was written by the president's personal lawyer, John Dodd. We just were speaking about him. Do you buy that explanation? Well, first, I've been encouraging the president uh, since his inauguration to stop tweeting so much. Um, it is not good for him or for our country. Um, second, uh, if his lawyer crafted that tweet, he might want to reconsider his representation because that certainly didn't serve the president's interests. Um, I think Mr. Dowd has already conceded that it was certainly sloppy. Um, third, it suggests that the president or his lawyer representing him um, knew that there was reason for the president, if he intervened with Jim Comey, to try and get him to lighten up on Flynn, to be doing so in a way that was obstructing justice. It is a truly concerning tweet if this accurately reflects the president's knowledge and state of mind. And if it doesn't, I don't know why his lawyer representing him would have, would have approved this tweet, put it in front of the president, and had him sign off on it. Over the summer, the special counsel, Robert Mueller, removed one of the FBI agents working on the Russia probe after an internal investigation discovered he had sent messages that could be interpreted as showing an anti-Trump bias. That same agent also worked on the investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email server and at one point changed crucial language in Comey's statement about Clinton's conduct. Do you worry about these revelations harming the credibility of the current investigation? Well, if what I think strengthens the credibility of Robert Mueller individually and the investigation he's leading is that we know in an instance where there was some um, suggestion of bias uh, by a critical agent, uh, it was investigated, it was dealt with, and he was dismissed. Um, so this isn't something that is hanging out there as an unresolved issue. It's something that Robert Mueller, when he became aware of it, 
um, is reported to have acted decisively to remove any potential interference or bias in his ongoing investigation, and I find that reassuring. All right, we, we're getting more breaking news on the Mueller investigation, Senator. I need you to stand by. We'll take a quick break. We'll resume our coverage right after this. The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer is brought to you by IBM. You, powered by data, knowledge, insight. That's you to the power of IBM. Another day of work. Why do you do it? It's not just a paycheck. You actually like what you do, even love it. And today, you can do things you never could before. You're developing AI applications on the cloud finding insights hidden in decades of medical documents, and securing millions of IoT sensors. So get back to it and do the best work of your life. When I grow up, I want to take old stuff I find and turn it into something amazing. Back then, making the next big thing was a challenge. Today, it's my job. Here at Coke, my team and I recycle cooking oil into renewable biofuels. It's a real challenge finding new ways to create energy, but I think I was born for this. You do all this research on the perfect car, then smash it into a tree. Your insurance company raises your rates. Maybe you should have done more research on them. For drivers with accident forgiveness, Liberty Mutual won't raise your rates due to your first accident. Switch and you could save $782 on home and auto insurance. Call 1-888-776-2147 for a free quote today. Liberty stands with you. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Ah, the age of mastery. A realm of skill and wisdom that only the experience may enter. Life has taught you well, and now nothing surprises you. But service with Consumer Cellular just might. Our average customers get all the talk, text, and data they need for less than $25 a month. That's probably a fraction of what you're paying now. Consumer Cellular has been ranked number one in customer service by J.D. Power three times in a row. AARP members get exclusive discounts. And switching is easy. Just go online, visit any Target store, or call us on the phone. Because you still know how to do that. There are no contracts and a risk-free guarantee so you can cancel at any time. But you won't, because even though you've made some mistakes in your day, this won't be one of them. To learn more, call, go online, or visit any Target store today. Consumer Cellular, you've earned it. Let's see why people everywhere are upgrading their water filter to zero water. Start with water that has a lot of dissolved solids. Pour it through Brita's two-stage filter. Dissolved solids remain? What if we filter it over and over? Oh, dear. Thank goodness Zero Water's five-stage filter gets to all zeros the first time. So, maybe it's time to upgrade. Get more out of your water. Get Zero Water. Beaches, Turks, and Caicos was created with everyone in mind. That's why everyone thinks it was created just for them. And it was. Generation Everyone. Yeah, all about a good time. Yeah, all about a good life. You won't believe it. Believe it. That's why we've been voted world's best 19 years in a row. Beaches, Turks, and Caicos, the number one all-inclusive family resort. Call 1-800-BEACHES. This holiday season, don't give a crummy gift. Show them you really care with the Ring video doorbell. Ring lets you see and speak with anyone at your door from anywhere. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. Check out over 20,000 five-star Amazon reviews. Like Robert, who writes, Ring is truly amazing. Video saved to the cloud? Two-way voice communication? Are you kidding me? No, Robert, we're not kidding you. Available at ring.com and these fine retailers. Closed captioning brought to you by onlymeso.com. Mesothelioma, it's all we do. With seven offices across the country, let us come meet with you. Call us at 1-800-213-8000. This is CNN Breaking News.
All right, before we get back to uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee member, Chris Coons, we have some breaking news to report. Senator Standby, the special counsel, Robert Mueller's investigators say former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort violated their trust and they're asking a federal judge to reconsider the deal that actually allowed his release on bail. Let's bring in our chief national security correspondent, Jim Shuto, working the story for us. So the new papers. Jim, have just been filed. That's right. Listen, uh, this is one of many shake-your-head moments in this case so far. So here you have Paul Manafort, a little more than a month after he was charged uh, with multiple crimes relating to the work he did for the pro-Russian former president of Ukraine, uh, was found to be ghostwriting an editorial in violation of the terms of his bail and doing so with a Russian who has ties to the Russian intelligence service. And he was working on this editorial uh, as recently as just this past Thursday, just a few days ago. Now, I'm going to quote from the judge's statement during the plea agreement. He said that his lawyers and prosecutors have asked him to, quote, refrain from making statements to the media or in public settings that pose a substantial likelihood of material prejudice to this case. His lawyers, the special counsel's office, say that doing this editorial with this Russian known to U.S. intelligence is a violation of that. Uh, so he stands the possibility of losing some of the privileges he has from this deal, uh, including being freed from house arrest, uh, being freed from GPS monitoring. That, of course, Wolf, was in exchange for him putting up $11 million in property as, a bail, because, as bail because the prosecutors consider him a flight risk. Uh, that's why they made him do it. So just in the midst of negotiating that, he gets those little pieces of freedom here, but then from the prosecutor's perspective has violated the terms of that agreement with really uh, something that you, you would think would be an obvious thing not to do, right? Yeah, an and editorial, he was a, public he was, statement. That was I was saying, he was, he was on the verge of being allowed to travel from Virginia to Florida to New York to D.C., all of that uh, in exchange for the $11 million that he was going to put up uh, collateral bail uh, in order to do so. But all of that now seems gone. That's exactly right. That's why he'd been freed from house arrest, freed from that GPS monitoring, giving him a little bit of freedom to travel to his homes, uh, perhaps do some business. But now he writes this public statement uh, on issues of national security with a Russia known to U.S. intelligence, and, and prosecutors arguing that bail agreement should therefore be rescinded. Sounds like it was a pretty dumb thing for him to do it sensitive moment Shake like your this. head at least. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thanks very much, Jim Shuto. Reporting, uh, let's bring back Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. He's a member of the Judiciary and Foreign Relations uh, Committee. He says, does, does it look to you, Senator, that uh, like Paul Manafort was attempting to influence public opinion and to help in his legal case in this particular aspect? And what do you think he was doing by uh, going ahead and accepting this offer? I mean, Wolf, this is simply stunning news. The idea uh, that Paul Manafort, uh, President Trump's former uh, campaign chairman, who's facing federal criminal charges uh, and had reached a plea agreement, a, a, excuse me, a bail agreement, where he was free to move without an ankle bracelet uh, to, to leave his home, but on the condition that he not engage in uh, public statements, that he was literally drafting an editorial with a Russian known to American intelligence, uh, that is just stunning. A, a, a word I know is now overused, but... Um, that is deeply foolish. Um, clearly, he's not listening to his lawyers, uh, or he's more afraid of the Russians than he is of federal prosecution in the United States. I mean, I, I have a really hard time, Wolf, uh, squaring that news with the idea that Paul Manafort is um, rational. Uh, that's an enormous risk for him to take yeah. and will almost certainly lead uh, to the reimposition of um, a, a different arrangement for his freedom uh, in advance of his facing trial. Because what's amazing is that, uh, according to the court documents, Senator, he was working on this editorial as recently as last Thursday, uh, which is pretty amazing, especially at a time when he was hoping to get some freedom to move around. Well, and, and Wolf, just for those who may have forgotten about Paul Manafort, um, he was the director, the manager, the chairman of the Trump presidential campaign, um, and had received millions of dollars uh, from um, Ukraine's former leader, Yanukovych, um, who is closely aligned uh, with Vladimir Putin and with Russian interests. Um, the idea that he would reinsert himself into that um, maelstrom of issues that compete with American national security interests at such a sensitive time is, is really striking. Because what's amazing is uh, this apparent obsession with Russia. How significant is it? Senator, that he was allegedly writing this uh, editorial with someone who apparently has ties, as you point out, and as our own report points out, with Russian intelligence. 
Uh, if, if accurate, that reporting is um, deeply troubling. It suggests that Manafort's ties uh, to Russians connected to Russian intelligence services continues uh, and continues unabated, and he continues to work with them and cooperate with them even while he faces federal criminal charges. That suggests a, a striking uh, indifference uh, to the legal situation he's in and an unwillingness to take responsibility for the ways in which he um, deflected or impacted uh, the Republican platform uh, during their convention on issues of Russia and Ukraine and impacted U.S. national security interests while he was the chairman of the Trump presidential campaign. This, this really is stunning breaking news. Well, it certainly is. And uh, the hope that he had uh, to get out of house arrest, move around the country a bit, uh, apparently that's going to go away very, very quickly. Uh, our Senator Coons, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. All right, we have more on the breaking news, new revelations about what President Trump knew uh, when he knew it before.